Kaepernick. So you remember Colin Kaepernick. He's that irrelevant backup quarterback from 2016 who made a name for himself by kneeling for the national anthem. And let us recall that Colin Kaepernick had already been made a backup quarterback. So I think it was Blaine Gabbert in, in San Francisco. In other words, he was a garbage quarterback. He was one of the lowest rated quarterbacks in the NFL. I think he was at the time he was benched the lowest rated quarterback in the NFL. Like out of 32 starting quarterbacks, he was number 32. And Colin Kaepernick was benched. And then in the preseason of 2016, before Trump was president, he started to kneel for the national anthem. It is also to be remembered that Colin Kaepernick, who said he was kneeling for the national anthem to protest widespread police brutality or some such nonsense, he's the kind of person who is wearing on practice field socks with pictures of cops as pigs. There's legitimately pictures of pigs with cop hats on them because this is what he thinks of police officers. This guy who grew up actually pretty privileged. He was adopted uh, and he grew up in a, in a pretty privileged area of California. It's, it's all kind of ridiculous. It's all kind of ridiculous. But Colin Kaepernick was made into a national hero by the left, which thinks that it is a, a Muhammad Ali-like stance to kneel for the national anthem. Okay, he did this in 2016. It became a national issue. President Trump commented on it as a candidate. It was very polarizing. Most Americans opposed kneeling for the anthem. But there's a heavy segment, particularly in the black community, that supported Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the national anthem. There's a very big racial gap in the polling numbers on kneeling for the national anthem. So Colin Kaepernick was offered in 2017, a, or in 2016, he was offered the chance to join the Denver Broncos. John Elway announced this in 2018. He was asked about picking up Colin Kaepernick, and he said, I said this a while ago. Colin had his chance to be here. We offered him a contract, and he didn't take it. Elway was referring to the 2016 season. Denver tried to trade for Kaepernick, who was under contract with the 49ers at a time. The quarterback would not agree to a restructured deal with Denver. And then the Broncos selected a couple of backup quarterbacks, and he lost his opportunity. And it turned out nobody really wanted the headache of Colin Kaepernick, not just because of the publicity, although publicity is something you have to take into account when you are a National Football League team, but also because he's just not a very good quarterback. Because Colin Kaepernick, after basically one spectacular season, fell off the map. And that's not unusual. There are a bunch of quarterbacks in the NFL who've had one great season then fallen off the map. And this has nothing to do with politics. I remember RG3, this social justice warrior campaign to sell sneakers produced by small children in Vietnam, presumably. It's kind of hilarious. Watching the entire left resonate around a huge billion dollar company, a huge corporation that allegedly exploits child labor in third world countries because, hey, Colin Kaepernick, that's pretty hilarious. It is also kind of hilarious that the slogan itself, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, it's a really dumb slogan. In fact, it's basically Thanos' slogan from Avengers Infinity Wars. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing half of humanity. What you believe is actually the key issue. I mean, if we're actually going to take that slogan seriously, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, it's not about believing in something. It's about what you believe in. The question is, are you believing the right things? Colin Kaepernick is not. He's never provided a shred of data to support his assertions that black people in the United States are being disproportionately shot by police because, in fact, they are not. And then we get to the actual issue of Colin Kaepernick being the face of this particular culture war. We get to the, the bottom line here. And there's a great irony to it, which I'll discuss in just a second. So Colin Kaepernick, again, says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything over his face for the Nike Just Do It campaign. I do love the fact that when you hashtag Just Do It with all the capitals properly utilized, it looks like Just Dolt. Um, but in any case, using Colin Kaepernick, he's a poor example of this because he didn't sacrifice anything. Colin Kaepernick did not sacrifice a thing. If we're going to talk about people who sacrificed in the NFL, there are legitimate former military members in the NFL. Now, Pat Tillman died in the line of duty, work, you know, as, a, as a soldier in, in Afghanistan for the NFL. Did, did Nike do a campaign around him? Of course they didn't, right? They, they just do it around, around Colin Kaepernick. And this is for capitalistic reasons. It is to make money. Nike is a corporation. They know we'll be talking about it today. They hope that by, by right-wingers talking about it, they will drive more people on the left to go out and buy sneakers on the basis of we don't like President Trump. And let's be frank about this. This is an anti-Trump campaign. This rally first started in the 2016 campaign. If Hillary Clinton were president right now, do you think that Nike would actually be running this ad campaign? Of course not.